Hello everyone. The truth about learning to draw. That's what it says in the title. But I know why you clicked on this video. It's not because you want the truth. It's because you want some comforting words. Some encouragement for you to pursue drawing even more. But today you will not get that. For today is a day of stone cold facts. And let me tell you, most of these facts are kinda depressing. And that sounds like I'm about to freaking quit or something, but that's not the case, all right? I'm just making sure you get that this video is factual and the facts are kinda sad. And I called it the truth about learning to draw because, well, it is the truth, at least for now. So let's just start with the beginning of learning to draw when you know absolutely nothing when you're learning to draw and you are at the very beginning and you have no idea about any fundamental or whatever then most of you will have a vision a vision of something that you want to create the sad fact about that is that this will probably not happen in the next few years Obviously, that all depends on what kind of vision or goals you have. But for the most part, these goals are set sky high. And that's fair and all. Having high goals can be a good motivator. However, it can also be quite the depressant. Recently, I've come across some people that try to pursue art. Not as a career, more like as a hobby, I think. But they want to draw. And they want to get better at drawing. And I've seen in them what I have seen in many others before. That they will try something and they expect immediate results. As in, they will draw ahead from reference and it looks pretty good. So they go on about drawing ahead without reference and it looks bad. And then they're like, well, why does it look bad? I've already done it once and it looked good. Which, when I say it like that, sounds pretty stupid. But be honest. You probably thought the same thing once before. And I mean, I'm no exception. I thought that many times. Hell, I'm thinking it right now. And expecting immediate change, like for the better, in your drawing skills is pretty hard. Not as in hard to achieve, because I don't think basically anyone can achieve immediate results, but hard on your health, on your mental health. Which kind of correlates to the next point I want to make which is the mentality that you have as an artist and that other people have towards you as an artist. For yourself, if you're trying to learn to draw, then I'm pretty sure you will know what I speak of when I say you feel like creating something and drawing the best thing that you have ever drawn. And then you sit down, grab your pen or stylus, sit at a tablet, whatever, and nothing. You're dry. Everything that you had before, all the motivation, it's gone. You're sitting there not knowing what to do and thinking about just not doing anything. Because truth is, most people, they don't care about the process. They don't care about drawing. They care about the finished drawing. And that's completely fine, but it's just hard to actually draw when you only want the finished drawing as an end result. Trying to see the act of drawing as, you know, the product itself is a much more healthier way to, you know, learn to draw and it can actually motivate you quite a bit. So next time, if you want to draw something, you know, you sit down and, well, actually, before you sit down, when you make plans to draw, then don't say, oh, I'm going to draw the prettiest girl from Pinterest ever and it's going to be huge and I'm getting so many likes. Just, you know, try to switch it up. Let's say, you will try to use this kind of drawing technique and get all hyped up about that. You're gonna notice it's probably much easier to actually start drawing and keep at it when you try to make the process the product. And as a good side effect, a refined process also makes a refined product. Now enough with your own mentality. Let's switch it up a little and go over to other people's mentality because you are drawing. That part only affects you when you actively post your drawings on something like Instagram or you do something like me where you do a YouTube channel and just talk about whatever the hell you want, like the truth about drawing, what the hell. But never mind that, there will be people that will see your art and the stuff that you have posted. And let me tell you, not a few of them will dislike it. The truth about the community of artists. 
as harsh as it may seem to say that, is the community of art and drawing on the internet is extremely toxic. Have you ever seen any kind of artwork posted? It doesn't matter if it's like an absolute master or a complete beginner. Have you seen an artwork posted on the internet with the comments enabled and every single comment was positive? No, of course not. I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio could resurrect and paint a second Mona Lisa. And some guy in the comments of the process video would probably be, well, I don't agree with the lighting. Yeah, it's just, the truth is, you need to expect to be hated on, mercilessly, by the way. But don't let something like that go to your head, because in the end, who really cares? They're strangers on the internet, and if it makes you feel better, you can always say to yourself, if they hate on your art, they're probably worse than you. Now, let's get into the intermediate side of things. When you already know a little about drawing, not a lot, but a little bit, and your drawings and paintings start to look like something, you know, something where people that don't draw think, well, that's really good. And don't get me wrong, it is really good. Every pro-level artist, even Leonardo DiCaprio, was once at this stage of his drawing journey. And at this particular stage, where a lot of people will praise you for what you've drawn, and equally as much will hate you for it, that can easily go to your head. But don't worry, it's kinda normal. And to explain that, I would like to present to you the Dunning-Kruger effect. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you didn't hear of it, which is not very likely because almost everyone has heard of it. Maybe not by name. It's the effect that once you get to some kind of skill level, which is far from expert skill level, in any kind of skill, your confidence boosts up extremely. And then, once you realize that you are absolutely not an expert, your confidence breaks down and slowly starts to rise up again. And that is, as it is with all skills, a part of the journey. Some have it a little more, some have it a little less. All you gotta know is, if you're ever feeling like you are the greatest artist in the history of mankind, then maybe I don't know, Google something like TB Choi sketches or Shenway Pen warm-up sketches. What you're gonna see is probably gonna put you back in your place, just like it does with me. And that brings us to my next point, comparing yourself to other artists. And now don't put a comment in this comment box where you say you do not compare yourself to others. That's something only beginners do. I know you do it. I know everyone does it. I do it, you do it. Somebody's dad is doing it while he's out buying cigarettes. It's a normal course of action. And looking at these peoples in form of looking up to them is completely fine. However, if you try to be an equal to them, then there's where the problem starts, which you will do. In due time, you will compare yourself. You will be there sitting in your chair, comparing your two months of art expertise with somebody that has drawn for 25 years. And the little voice inside your head will just go, why can't I do it? And that's completely normal. You just have to remind yourself they are absolute pros and you are not yet. Learning to draw is a process and every time you do it, you get better, just a tiny bit. And with that said, we're going to the last point of improving a tiny bit every time you draw. Who would have thought a good point in this video, even though it's about stone cold facts. But yeah, this one is a good fact. Whenever you draw, whenever you actively think about improving your art, every time you improve, it's almost like every time we practice something, we get better at it. We just need to find the courage and motivation to do it, which can be very hard. Because in drawing, the long time motivation looks a little bit like this. And in this little diagram that I personally drew, you will see a lot of spikes. And the spiky line is your motivation, whilst the non-spiky line is your drawing skills. And the spikes in the motivation line, they come because you will eventually draw something on your journey that will be better than anything you have drawn before. And that is the point where you have your biggest motivation. All these hours, these sleepless nights, these complete days or weeks or months that you have used to improve your art skills. They have finally paid off. 
And with that super high motivation, you go in and you get your next drawing started only to see is pretty freaking bad. It doesn't even compare to the thing you drew just before, which is absolutely normal. Not every drawing somebody does is perfect and only by failing enough times we can succeed, even in drawing. The true mastery of art is to put the fails behind you and make less and less failed art pieces every time you try to draw. So as your motivation always rises high and drops down low, your art skills gradually improve and this one piece of art, which is the best piece that you have ever drawn, will change over the time. It's always going to be a new one, setting the bar for what you think is your best, even higher and higher. And before you know it, the things that you think are kind of failed artworks, other people look up to and think to themselves, how could I ever draw such a masterpiece? Now, I've been monologuing for 11 minutes now, and my throat is getting sore. So I will say goodbye and happy drawing.